council meeting. We will follow with a budget workshop, which we'll do the same way we did last time. We'll remain at the dais, go right back up, pick up the stuff we didn't cover last week and some new stuff. And then we have a TBD meeting uh, that's got some business that needs to take place tonight. And it must start by 9.30 p.m. So we're going to roll through all that stuff. And so with that, the next uh, item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. Um, they have the update where we turned uh, B and C into B on uh, public hearing. Okay. So a motion to approve the agenda as amended would be in order. Nothing's working here. Okay. okay. All right. So we have a motion from Councilmember Coffee, a second from uh, Councilmember West. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Hearing none, the agenda is approved. Thank you, Council. Um, the next two agenda items are public hearings. The 2017 proposed budget, regular and EMS property tax levies. Both will follow these procedures. Persons wishing to be heard at this hearing should sign in on the sign-in sheet at the podium or in the foyer. Persons who do not sign in shall speak after all those who have signed in have given their testimony. Three minutes will be allowed per person. Public hearing for the proposed 2017 City of DuPont budget is open at 7.03 p.m. The purpose of this hearing is for the City Council to hear testimony on the proposed 2017 City of DuPont budget. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to be heard. Please keep comments to the item that is being discussed. An official recording will be made of what is said at this hearing. Therefore, those addressing the City Council are requested to begin there by stating their name and address. Speak clearly into the microphone, one person at a time. This time is for testimony. No debate is allowed. Order of speaking will be staff presentation, testimony from anyone wishing to speak, and the council may speak on hearing topics during the council comments portion of the meeting. Um, so next up will be staff presentation, and I'd like to introduce Finance Director Paul Berry. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Tonight I want to bring forth to you the, oh, you guys have the clicker for me, a uh, brief presentation on the 2017 budget, and then at the end of this presentation we're going to provide an opportunity for the public to, to make their comments. An important part of putting a budget together is making sure you know what vision and mission you're heading towards. So I think it's important to start with that tonight. And the vision of the city is to become the best city in Washington with the proper balance between public safety, quality of life, economic vitality, and environmental and historic preservation. The mission is to provide affordable, high quality municipal services with responsive and accessible local governance ensuring everyone has an opportunity to contribute to the community of DuPont. Before I move past this slide into the budget overview, I do want to make sure that everyone knows there is a copy of the PowerPoint out on the table here if they wanted one for reference. <coughs> the city's 2017 <coughs> proposed budget includes $15.5 million of expenditure. Of that $15.5 million, 52% of that budget is within the general fund. The general fund's 2017 proposed budget is $8,125,000, which is representing just about a 0.9% or 9 hundredths of a percent over the adopted budget for 2016 and a 3.6% decrease over the current revised 2016 budget. When putting this, this 2017 budget together, it was important that we were able to maintain the same levels of services um, or increase the level of services across all departments. And that has been um, part of this budget, we were able to accomplish that goal. 
In addition to that, the proposed budget also includes property tax levies, which has that statutory 1% increase um, in, in uh, the levy amount, as well as new construction and adjustments. And we'll talk a little bit more about property tax with our uh, next public hearing. Looking at the citywide budget, you're going to see just ultimately a graphic of what's going on within the budget. Now, this includes not just the general fund, but also our utilities. Our utilities, which is our water and storm water, make up 21% of the overall budget. Where if you look at police and fire, that's 31% of our overall expenditures are made up of public safety. Being that public safety is part of our um, uh, mission and vision for the city, uh, it's good to see that we're following that within this budget as well. This graphic here does not include capital projects because capital projects change from year to year, nor does it include inner fund transfers because oftentimes if you include those inner fund transfers, you end up double counting numbers and we certainly don't want to be doing that. Moving on to the general fund, when we look at the general fund, they're providing the basic services and the daily the normal daily operations of the city. So this is going to include your police, fire, parks and greenways, recreation, events, tourism, facilities, maintenance, building and permitting, um, jail, court, and animal control contracts. It also <coughs> includes the administrative services, such as administration, legal, finance, and information technology. General Fund receives a variety of revenue sources. The bulk of those revenue sources are through taxes. As you can see from this graphic, 21.7% of our property taxes, are, 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 our revenue are coming from the regular property tax levy. And followed by utility taxes, business taxes, and sales taxes. In most cities, you're gonna see sales tax at number two. In some cities, you're going to see sales taxes number one. So in our organization, um, sales tax is truly much further down on our list of tax uh, that we do receive. And it's a little bit um, different, but we do, um, I just wanted to point that out, that it is a little bit different than the other organizations that I have seen. Um, then, once you get past the tech taxes, the rest of that comes from, our revenues come from fees and charges at 8.6%. Licenses and permits, 7.2%. Now let's put some dollars to those figures. Taxes, are about $6.4 million of the revenue budget comes from taxes. The next closest revenue are those licenses and permits at $590,000. Overall, our general fund revenues will be coming in at about $8.1 million. With those revenues, we're using those to cover, oh, yes, oh, I need to go back one more, sorry. Sometimes this slide gets a little touchy. Let's talk about our tax revenue breakdown. So we talked about $6.4 million are coming in from our taxes, primarily 39% from our property taxes. That's both the regular and the EMS. 24% from utility taxes, 19% from b &O and square footage taxes. Uh, just under, if you include criminal justice, we're over a million dollars in sales and criminal justice sales taxes and $60,000 in admissions tax. So with all those revenues coming in, this is what those revenues are paying for. It's paying for the, um, I should have sorted this really more by, by dollar figure. Police department at $2.1 million. The fire department at $2 million. Um, planning and building at $830,000. Public works, which includes your parks, your greenways, your museum, your recreation, your tourism and facilities at $954,000. Um, finance and governance at about just over a million dollars. 
So if you look at this from a graphic point of view, your general fund expenditures, again, are supporting the goal of having um, public safety as a priority with 49% of the budget um, representing uh, public safety. 11% for public works, and I went through that list on the last slide of all the divisions that that encompasses. Planning at 11%, and governance and finance. And governance is going to be mayor, council, uh, human resources, city clerk, those kind of support services. This is the general funds any fund balance going back all the way to 2014. And so often people wonder why in the world do you keep so much money sitting in your ending fund balance? They, they can't understand why we would be holding on to so much money. Well, if you think about it, what is our primary source of revenue? That's our property taxes. Property taxes are due in April and October. Those taxes actually come into the city Primarily, Griff, we do receive little bits every month, but primarily we see that revenue in May and November. When we get that revenue, we have to hold on to that because that is our revenue stream to cover us for that six month period of time as we're waiting for that next round of property tax to come in. So although people wonder why it's sitting like that, truly a lot of that has to do with cash flow, making sure that we have that property tax that came in in November to hold us over for the next six months as we're waiting for the next. You will see going in 2014, 15, 16 and on that that amount is still going down for the cash balances. But do remember, we began putting money into the reserve funds. Reserve funds are not reflective in this fund balance. That money and that fund balance is part of another account that is sitting out there. And so you will see this going down, but please remember we are building up fund reserves and other funds. And then looking at the fund balances as a whole for 2017, we're looking to end the year at about $11.1 million, $11.2 million in ending fund balances amongst the various funds. Uh, $933,000 for the general fund and $615,000 for the reserve funds. At this point, I'd like to turn it over for public comment. Okay, um, if there are any written materials that have been submitted or that anyone wishes to submit without speaking. Also, if anyone has questions on the subject, please do not hesitate to stop by City Hall during business hours or call our main line and staff will assist you with getting answers to your questions. I'll now call upon the person signed up on the sign-in sheet. And if nobody was signed in to speak, Okay, so since no one has signed in to speak, um, is there anyone who has not spoken and wishes to? Don Dresser, 1437 Huron Court. Um, just a, a two short uh, comments. One, um, uh, I don't believe in the study. I've mentioned this before, spending $80,000 to do a study. There's no real big push for people from the, um, the, the do something like that for a civic center. Uh, I noticed the uh, Property values are back up and past where they were before the 2008 depression. And we're starting to pull ourselves together so that we have some uh, basic services again. Uh, the one thing uh, that was just brought up was the sales tax. And uh, I would like to know how much goods or services are purchased online in which no sales tax is given to the state, county, or the city. And uh, 
Some states are going to make it mandatory now. In fact, I think California is already made it mandatory. If you live in California and you order something from uh, G Wiz Company, uh, you, they have to put a sales tax and collect tax and, and send it forward. That could be has to be done by the state, and uh, so that I think you have to look into that, uh, and that's about it. I think you guys are doing a good job. David Barr, 2702 MacArthur Street. During the first quarter budget adjustment, $80,000 was asked for a community center feasibility study. The citizens said no. The citizens asked you to open up the community center to the public. There is an opportunity to take the 100000 for the feasibility study for the community center and put some money into the upkeep and maintenance of the existing community center and open it to the public. The Shaw House can also be opened as a smaller community center. Both of these could be rented for birthdays, anniversaries, other special events. You could hire some teenagers, young college people, part-time and volunteers to sit in there and host events. Parks and Rec could use those, buy some weeds, set up some gaming opportunities. Um, we need the community center. We already have it. We don't need a study. The city created the problem of truck staging on Center Drive and in the neighborhoods. Take some of the money from the feasibility study and create a truck staging area. You have two areas that you can do. The four acres right here, put some gravel down, buy some signs and post it, or open up Power Line Road, put in a roundabout, a gravel roundabout so they can go down there, park, and come back out. We don't need trucks parked on Center Drive. Please, take some time and think of that $100,000. It could go many ways that will serve the citizens. As for your one-time money that you want to do all the projects for upkeep and maintenance, you have a gravel mine right over here. You guys refuse to tax it. That could cover all of those one-time projects. Thank you. Being no further testimony, I will close the public hearing. The next public hearing on the proposed 2017 budget will take place on November 8, 2016, at the next DuPont City Council meeting. Time is now 7:19. The procedures are the same for this hearing as the last. Public hearing for the proposed 2017 regular and EMS property tax levies. The purpose of this hearing is for the City Council to hear testimony on the proposed 2017 regular and EMS property tax levies. Everyone present will be given an opportunity to be heard. Please keep comments to the item that is being discussed. An official recording will be made of what is said at this hearing. Therefore, those addressing the City Council are requested to begin by stating their name and address. Speak clearly into the microphone. One person at a time. This time is for testimony. No debate is allowed. Order of speaking will be staff presentation. Testimony from anyone wishing to speak. Council may speak on the hearing topics during the council comments portion at the end. This public hearing is open at 7.20. I will now introduce Finance Director Paul Berry. 